Hello everyone, welcome to 360 Degrees Excellence, where we believe everyone can have all around success. Today I'm going to be having a conversation with Professor Charles Adetunji, and we're going to be talking about uh, challenges and potentials of uh, Africa bar economy. Uh, the bar economy uh, covers all sectors and systems that rely on uh, biological uh, resources, for example, plants, animals, uh, microbi uh, microorganisms, ETC. And when we have a strategy and we implement the strategy, I'm talking about a uh, uh, economy strategy. And when we implement that strategy, uh, it can help uh, us uh, have uh, food and uh, nutrition security, uh, it can help us to manage um, natural resources well. It can help Africa to be competitive. competitive. It can help us, help us to create jobs. So there are so many advantages to having a strategy, but economy strategy. I've seen that um, uh, South Africa has a strategy uh, as far as bioeconomy is concerned. I've also seen uh, Eastern um, Africa, they also have a strategy. So bioeconomy is very, very important in this days that we're talking about sustainability. And also we're also talking about, you know, being climate smart. So what we are really talking about today is very, very interesting. It's very, very important. And I have um, an expert in the house that will be sharing with us. And so without wasting time, I'm going to be asking Professor Charles to tell us about himself, what he does, where he works, and from there, we dig in into our topic. Over to you, Professor Charles. Yeah, thank you, my distinguished and elder Professor of Eminence. I'm so grateful for all the great things you are doing, and thank you for bringing me on board. I am uh, a faculty member at the Microbiology Department, Faculty of Science at the State University of Zari, Nigeria, uh, where I utilize application of biological techniques and microbial process for actualization of sustainable development goal and for attainment of agrarian revolution to quality teaching research and community development. I've also acted uh, in the capacity as the acting director of intellectual property. I've acted as a sub I'm presently the uh, dean of the Faculty of Science. Also, I'm also the university chairman for grant and research committee. Also, I'm also the executive director for the Center of Biotechnology at Precious Cornerstone uh, University, where I'm also a visiting professor. I've served as an external examiner to different uh, body. We have examined PhD and master students. I've also received a lot of grants from renowned academic body like Council of Scientific Industrial Research, Bible of Biotechnology, uh, World Academy of Science, Nana Lab Fellowships, and a lot of uh, other grant body like uh, Royal Academy of Engineering in UK. I have published a lot of uh, journal totaling to around 450 and above, and I have a lot of uh, scientific patents. And uh, recently this year, I was ranked as number 20 top most published scientists among all the professors and lecturers in Nigeria. Uh, according to Savin and Scopus records, uh, my area of uh, research includes microbiology, biotechnology, post-harvest, food science, bioinformatics, and nanotechnology. And I was recently appointed as the president of and governing chairman of uh, Nigeria Bioinformatics and Genomics Networks. And recently, as a result of my presentation at the uh, Senate, when uh, Nigerian uh, Senate uh, invited Microbiological Society to come and make a kind of presentation about microbiology. So I got an appointment as the Director of International Affiliation and Training Center for Environment and Public Health Research and Development in Zaria. I am also a series editor for a wide uh, journal ranging from uh, a uh, series editor with uh, Willie and Sons, Elsevier, Taylor and Francis. We are presently editing various textbooks uh, on agricultural biotechnology, 
uh, nanotechnology, pharma food, environmental sustainability, and environmental science, and a lot of other more. I am a editorial board of several international journals, and I have served as a VM uh, reviewer for double blind peer review journal like Estivia Springer, Francis Wheelie, really Plus One Nature, American Chemistry Society, Bentham, and a lot of other more. I am affiliated with many scientific bodies like American Society of Microbiology, but the Chemistry Society of Nigeria. Uh, also, I'm also the general and executive director of Nigeria Academy of Science. Uh, I have acted and served as a keynote speaker to so many uh, university scientists and several centers of education that are spanned across several globe around the world. Also, recently, I was appointed as a country representative uh, to represent Nigeria for African Union Development Agency and Nepal Center of Education Science, Technology and Innovation, uh, which is kind of a mandate to support African ongoing industrial initiative and to uh, come up with an intervention program uh, through the usage of genomic editing and other particular techniques that could span and increase uh, agricultural production and food security across Africa and Nigeria and beyond uh, the African shore. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful. That is a lot of a small thing about me. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, you know, uh, Prof, how are you able to do all those things? You know, all those things that you, you mentioned. How, how, how are you able to do that? How do you do that? Yeah. Thank you very much, my distinguished pro. Actually, uh, it has been grace of God. Uh, looking at you also as a very uh, typical example of a distinguished professor, I admire you a lot. And uh, one thing anybody could do to bring about success, number one basis must be from God. Without God factor, all these things I'm saying is not going to work. And also, there are three D of life that we need to imbibe into all whatever we are doing. We must have discipline, we must have dedication and diligence at the 3D of a great and a renowned scholar. So definitely if we are going to achieve a lot of things, we need to revolve uh, everything up to be centered around God, like a universal set and the 3D of life, which I have mentioned about uh, earlier. Thank you very much, Prof. Fantastic. I like, I, like, I like your response. It's very, very important, you know, for us to, you know, make sure that uh, we believe in God, we trust God, like you said, and for us to be dedicated, be diligent. Uh, very, very important. And now to the topic of the day. Um, from your own point of view, as someone that um, is knowledgeable, in the topic that we're talking about, and you also just mentioned that um, uh, you have just been appointed, you know, to be part of NEPAD when, when they're talking about uh, science and technology. And um, you are also into these uh, gene editing and, you know, biotechnology, that's, that's your area. Uh, yeah. So can you tell us about the challenges and the potential of uh, bioeconomy in Africa? Yeah, first of all, let me, first of all, thank you very much, Prof. Let me quickly, first of all, provide a background because of, uh, I know we have a larger house, not everybody is into the academics. But let me provide a basic thing so that everybody can grab uh, before I move from the super to the complex one. Now, by economy, uh, could be defined as the production of renewable biotechnology resources and the conversion of these resources and waste streams into value-added products such as food, feed, uh, bio based product and bio energy. Also, it is a sector and industry that have a strong innovation potential due to the use of a wider range of science, which has enabled industrial technology along with local and fast knowledge. Now, biotechnology, let me define biotechnology also, is the technology that utilizes biological system, living organisms, and parts of these to develop and create different products. Now, modern biotechnology have provided a kind of a breakthrough products and technology to combat dilapidating and rare disease, reduce environment input, uh, feed the hunger, uh, use less and cleaner energy, and have a kind of safer environment and a more efficient uh, industrial manufacturing process. Now, 
But technology is a key thing that uh, is going to help us to solve uh, a lot of global problems. And you will remember that it has been stipulated that the global population is going to increase drastically to 9 billion in the year 2050. So that means there is a clarion call on all of us to look for a sustainable tool as a scientist that we can use to solve the global problem. So by technology and by economy are together working parallelly in order to solve. Now the world is moving from a linear economy now to circular economy because we have it all around us. We just need to understand the potential of everything we have around us. We are not going anywhere, we're going to solve our problem. So we have it. So the usage of by economy and by technology. But technology has helped to heal the world by announcing nature's own toolbox and using its own genetic method to heal guidelines of research and a lot of it. You remember when the issue of COVID happened? Also, it has reduced a lot of infectious disease, saved millions of lives, changing all of serious and life threatening conditions of millions around the world. Tailoring treatment to individuals to minimize health risks and side effects. It also creates more precise tools uh, for disease uh, detection and combines a lot of things in, in terms of food industry and agriculture. But technology is the key thing. So we need to use our economy to resolve all the economic challenges that, is a that have become a major worry. If you look at major countries in the African countries in Aero, they are going through a lot of, a lot of things. So but technology has become the only reliable tool that is going to help us to raise our GDP and boost the economy of diverse uh, country. So talking about by economy and about technology, they works hand in hand. And uh, it's, it's early and compensatory, uh, which uh, through this uh, interaction, I'm going to mention a lot of points and African uh, as a whole, what do we need to do and where do we go from here? Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you so much for telling us about the relationship between biotechnology and bioeconomy. Uh, so if we really want to have a country that is you know, very, very buoyant when it comes to bioeconomy, we must be serious about biotechnology. And for yeah. you yeah. agree with me that as far as Africa is concerned, biotechnology is still not what it's supposed to be compared to other African countries, sorry, to, compared to you know, uh, the Western world. So it's yeah. important for us to really invest more in biotechnology, uh, encourage a lot of students to do, a lot of students are doing it, but many of them don't yeah. get a job. So another thing we need to do is that how do we make uh, Africa to become a knowledge economy? Because yeah. if we're talking about by economy, you also want your country to be a knowledge economy. So the, the students that, you know, go through the roots of biotechnology, uh, they'll be able to contribute to that knowledge economy, economy and that, you know, by economy that we are really talking about. So we yeah. still have a long way to go to make Africa to become a bow, you know, to become a knowledge economy so that um, yeah. uh, we can also make sure that uh, uh, bioeconomy be becomes in entrenched and becomes strengthened. So that's what I really want us to focus on today, yeah. uh, to really still talk about the potential of bioeconomy. economy. And let's also now talk about the challenges that we have yeah. and what can we do to begin to overcome some of these challenges. Can you tell us about you know, the, the potential and also the challenges that we have as yeah. far as Bahamas is concerned? Yeah, thank you, uh, my distinguished professor of eminence. Before we go into that, I want all of us to have a consciousness that we are all potential billionaires. But God, many of us do not have the awareness that we have the natural resources and understanding the critical importance of biotechnology in making these available resources to make us that billionaire. So this talk is essentially going to help not only scientists, not only people, not only consumer, even government and policy maker. Now let's start beyond food, feed and fiber. It is important and vital for us to move biomass production and processing beyond just food, uh, fair, fiber, and to include a wide range of value added products such as biofuel, bioplastic, these products have potential to be applied in many sectors. And many of us don't know that we have them all around us from pharmaceutical and green chemical to industrial material and energy. Another critical point that we need to base on is optimization of biomass use. 
Many of us just throw away our banana waste, orange waste, and a lot of other things from our house. Look at the farm that whenever our uh, crops is being harvested, we throw away the stack and a lot of things. These are potential fuel that could generate a lot of things. Now, issue of farming things have come to place. The issue of uh, petrol, scarcity, and a lot of frosty uh, degeneration, and a lot of other things. So all of these things we have around us, we need to now announce them together and make use of them for that potential to come. Many African countries are lucky enough to be endowed with an abundant spread of natural resources that include approximately about 60% of the world arable land. Vast freshwater, marine reserves. Now, I'm here in Durban. Uh, I can see ocean deposited and blessed with a lot of natural resources that have never been tapped, plus significant potential for enhanced solar energy. However, resources are evenly distributed and go ecological niche and biomass condition very widely across continent because of constraints of water, land, and infrastructure markets. So that means continual uh, improvement in biomass productivity and optimization of biomass can really help us combine with a viable uh, bio business uh, sector can add value to primary production and as potential to drive a broader African uh, bio-based economy growth. I will be talking about a lot of points. Also, currently, the African bioprocessing sector is running at a so optimal level, and we need to understand this as a critical point. Also, uh, it produces large amount of waste. Now, which have, be, which have costed many governments, individuals, a kind of economic and ecological challenges in managing the large number of uh, uh, waste that is being generated in major cities, which are constituted a lot of atropogenic uh, uh, activities and have caused several environmental pollution. So for emerging African bioeconomies, it is important to now transform the sector so that it added a lot of value to the primary production while at the same time uh, converting waste into valuable products in a resource efficient and eco-friendly. So governments and policymakers in region of African country and many complex questions need to answer a lot of difficult and complex questions to develop a holistic by economy strategy. Now, there are some points that we need to know. One of the most pressing is our country in sub-Saharan Africa can make use of the substantial biological resources available for them using new technologies and new market conditions and do this with constraint on financial, technical, and industrial resources. Also, what type of investments in science and technology platform and innovation as well as natural resource management and production system can best connect small scale farmers to markets? Also, value chain and agro processing opportunity needs to be taking place. Now, what specific investments are needed and how capacity could be built around them? We need to answer most of these difficult questions. What type and scope of strategy are needed and what policy must be put in place? There are a lot of need to trash out the best type of research and development, entrepreneur and business and financing. I was with Professor Ijabare yesterday. I was so impressed with the level of technology I found in his department. So I'm not surprised he's exceeding as a distinguished professor. So government also needs to work with industry, academia, and research institutes to collaborate before uh, by economic opportunity. Finally, how do countries ensure investment in bioeconomy and ensure that consideration is given to social, economy, and environmental constraints? Now, th these are some of my recommendations for us to drive bioeconomy in Africa. If truly, truly we want to key into this, and use this as a food point to boost the GDP of several economies. Now, the whole world is going through a lot of economy uh, challenges and strengths, constraints. So we need to create number one, create job through bio-based economy development and develop policy and regulatory framework that could create demand for bio-based technology and knowledge, as well as certification, quality, and environment standard, public pro uh, procurement efforts and uh, tax incentive needs to come in place. Another second point is that we need to develop national by economy strategy. These are critical for, uh, that we need to guide the investors, government intervention, policy agenda, and a lot of other things. We need to drive innovation. There is a need to link 
innovation to market at top, translate promising technology, expert into social benefits at a larger scale. African countries often need support to build capacity in terms of research and development, including training of Etapedra. Platform for communication need to be created to enable academia to interact better. This is what we are doing with Professor Ijebade, that that's where I'm in South Africa now, to uh, interact with a lot of scientists, what is on ground, how we can make a kind of uh, decision. Then African Union has a lot of role to play. Thank God. Uh, I'm getting closer with them and I'm going to help them in coming up with a lot of this uh, robust policy that could help. Now, we need to link African farmers to markets and agro value chain to gain benefit from uh, by economic development. We need to support African bio based companies. I'm talking about small uh, to medium enterprises, which are critical for translating a uh, promising bio economy into usable tool for practitioners, not uh, least for small farm owners. It's not that a lot of technology discovery have not been done in Africa, but many of us are just at the basic research. Now we need to key into application of translational research in order for us to have a robust circular economy. <laughs> and the most pro uh, mo one of the most prominent problem in Africa is that most African countries have private sector that lack capacity, resource person to move research and development uh, effort to market. It's not that we are not but we are not talking about products that we need to see in the market. So which shows that because of this limited collaboration between investors within Africa, SME, and knowledge producer, investors and supporter needs to come together to enable SME to deploy more than about economic technology to African market, uh, market and is very, very, very crucial at this point of time. Another point uh, we will not address so much is we need to assess and address uh, tension and potential conflicts that could uh, prevent uh, the sustainability of bioeconomy in resolving this global. A vision for bioeconomy strategy in Africa needs to come in place. What do I mean? Education and training of African youth in bioeconomy and bio entrepreneur is a vital long term uh, strategy for developing such a vision. Other steps include partnering with African overseas companies for commercialization. We need to pretend many of our products. Many of us just do research, we don't pretend. We need to pretend, we need to go into commercialization. We need to scale up uh, up to like functional and economic technology, such as uh, using model success, success story of deployment. Such partnerships should be focused and be driven by African needs and live blue uh, reality. Then we need to be adjusted for local context. We have locally available material. We just need to use this technology to solve our locally available problem using locally available. Then we need to develop a kind of South-South and South North partnership. So partnership collaboration is very, very important. We need to pin them. Then also, we need to develop and work with global development agencies that have made it and that have helped develop country and nation agencies, United uh, Nations agencies such as UNESCO, WHO, FAO, UNIDO, and HODA who offer a lot of opportunity. I have seen a lot of consultants that have bridged the gap are using all these uh, global developing agency for us to uh, because they could, they have a lot of things to offer opportunities to leverage global energy for knowledge sharing and uh, advocacy. Then we need to key into translation to a sustainable bio based economy. It's very 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 important. Thank you very much, my distinguished professor. Thank, thank you so much, Professor uh, Addison. You really covered it very well. You talked about the challenges and the potential of the uh, Africa about economy. And something that really came up for me, you really said a lot of things, but I just want to really talk about the collaboration. Collaboration is the key, it's very important. Collaboration between all the relevant, relevant stakeholders in the country, collaborators with international partners, very, very important. And then, um, and we, you also mentioned the case of patenting commercialization as, as researchers, we must not only just think about publishing it. Publishing is very, very important. You know, in academia, they said publish or perish. It's good to publish your article, but we must also begin to think about commercialization. How are we going to make, you know, what the research that we are doing, how can we combat it to a startup? There was a time I organized a workshop for postdoctoral students and PhD students and uh, turn your research into a profitable startup. Uh, we must begin to 
you know, think about that, especially researchers in, you know, uh, biological resources, in microbiology, in doing, working with plants, working with animals, you know, they, they must begin to think about that. How do they combat their research into, you know, commercialization is very, very important. I really want to solve the problem of unemployment in Africa, you know, uh, especially also among the PhD graduates. A lot of them who graduate, they don't have jobs. Uh, I know some of them want to go overseas. I'm not going to stop anybody from going overseas, but all of us can leave our continent. So we must, you know, encourage master students, PhD students to think about commercialization. So no, there's a lot they can do, you know, with the knowledge that they have. Very, very important. So, you know, I really, I really uh, appreciate all the things that you said and also the passion uh, you put into it. And I'm so happy that you, uh, with the African Union and all other uh, organizations that you belong to, they are really, 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 uh, you know, blessed to have you there. Okay, now I just want to talk about this. Uh, I know you've um, published a lot of articles, uh, more than 400 articles, fantastic. You know, you are really a very hard worker uh, because if you are not, you know, a very hard working person, it's not possible for you to do that. And, and also you've written a lot of books. Uh, you've edited a lot of books, uh, maybe, maybe even up to 100, that's a lot. Now, uh, you, you, you said to Ross earlier on the secrets. I don't want to ask you what's your secret again. I know your secret is God. Apart from that, the three D that you mentioned, that you know, uh, now. But if someone wants to follow your path, apart from really talking to them about, you know, uh, God is God, and also about the three Ds, what other things you want to share with them? Somebody is starting his career, and like uh, I want to make uh, Professor Adetunji my mentor. What advice you have for them? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, my distinguished professor of eminence. But permit me to round up something coming to my mind on bioeconomy so that uh, it could be of benefit uh, because I believe your network and your channel is being watched globally. And governments could also use whatever I'm saying today and many policy makers, it could be of help. So before I could go to the question you asked, which I'm going to... Uh, touched. Permit me, sir, to quickly uh, say one or two three lines also before I round up. Uh, you talk about challenges of bioeconomy. I think we need to announce all these challenges together. Number one is that many African countries are endowed with relative abundant natural resources, but they are poorly equipped to adopt bioeconomy. Now, a lot of challenges are going on in many countries now, but most especially issue of climate changes. If you look at law culture, Kogi State, Nigeria, many people suddenly became homeless and several parts in Delta and other part of the when compared with countries from America, Europe, and Asia. Now, what are the reasons why? This is mainly due to the post state of investment of research and development, deaths of people in the research and development, poor government spending on research development. We need to analyze, we can't shy away from the lack of patenting application, death of researcher and technician in research and the absence of latest technology, poor industrial production process, poor university industrial collaboration, poor institutional arrangement, more rule of law and quality of infrastructure are the key challenges to bioeconomy on the continent. So uh, also we need to introduce bioeconomy Readiness index is going to help us if actually we want to uh, adopt bioeconomy to determine the state of production that determine bioeconomy in African country and other selected countries. So theoretically, country with higher and better uh, bioeconomy readiness index will perform better and deploy economy in resolving various challenges such as climate change and a lot of other things. Uh, let me just stop here because of uh, our time yeah. and go straight to the other question you asked, Professor. Now. If you want to be a distinguished scientist and a scholar, it involves a lot of hard work, dedication, and discipline. That's what I talk about, the 3D of great success in life. Number one, you must, first of all, have a mentor. 
I was very impressed yesterday when I came to Durban University, when I saw a lot of students coming to show their work, their research to uh, Professor Ijabari. He shows the mentorship mentee relationship. That is number one secret to success. Because if you don't have somebody that will guide you, it becomes very, very difficult. Number two, you must be affiliated to a particular field. Do you want to become a football technologist? Many people do not have a definite discipline. Fine, it's good to participate in a kind of multidisciplinary approach, uh, network and study, but you must be known for something. You must be distinguished in a particular area. You can't become a professor of mathematics at the same time, become a professor of geography, a professor of food science. So number one, I said you must have a mentee mentor relationship. Number two, you must have a particular field you belong. Number three is that you must be affiliated to a particular society. What I mean is that like uh, American Society of Microbiology, Nigeria Society of Biotechnology, South African Society of Microbiology, South African Society of Food Science and Technology, you need to be affiliated to it because most of the uh, new recent trends and tech names that I have used in resolving many of the problem around me, I discovered them during uh, interaction at conferences, society program, and a lot of other updates. Now, I have a question to ask all of us. How many of us have studied the latest discovery from our journal? I told some of my PhD students that before you enter into the PhD, you have to do orientation for six months. Um, you will go and download latest trend in particular field you want to, because when you are not knowledgeable, when you don't have understanding of literature review, it's very difficult that you want to bridge a gap. Which gap do you want to bring? You must know who is the scientist that have discovered the application of CRISPR-9 in these techniques, application of these particular techniques, where did they end their research? Did they, what was their future recommendation? Are you going to start from the future recommendation or whatever we do? So, Society has a role to play. You must be belong to a particular society. Another thing that's going to help is that there is a need to have a kind of research clusters. Why many universities are not being cited uh, or recognized is because there is a lack of research cluster. You must formulate and create a kind of research cluster that we have the very best brain uh, in that particular cluster to guide and disseminate little trends of information. That's our advice. So when you have a research cluster, it's going to help you, guide you, for you to be able to uh, produce the very best inside of you. Now, let me tell all of us these things. We look at Lovell Lorette and many of them, but I'm telling you today that the very best, your very best is yet to come. You are also a potential of the You just need to analyze and analyze and recognize a lot of things that you have the potential on top of uh, bio resources within you. You need to analyze them and uh, understand. What do I mean? You need to understand your limitation and your weakness. For the fact that Charles can publish 400 paper does not mean I have to put myself inside the shoe of Charles. You need to recognize your strengths, your weakness, and a lot of things. Another important point that I know that have helped me is I do a lot of robust collaboration. We need, how do you get somebody who say that I'm just coming up, I'm a younger, I'm just master student. Now, through the help of your supervisor, that is why I talk about a uh, mentor-mentee relationship. It's gonna guide you, help you, when you go to the website of many of these great scientists doing well, maybe they just publish a new paper. Go to that paper, check their address, go to their affiliation, go to their website, study whatever they are doing in their research group. It is very, 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 very important. So what am I saying in essence is that uh, there are a lot of points and highly encompassing points that could help us to become highly distinguished uh, uh, scientists or professor or a scholar. Also, other thing that we need to do. So when you now build a robust, uh, journal writing skill. Then another thing that you need to know is that you must be a uh, very, very sound grammatically and functionally because there is nothing you might be writing if 
it is not grammatically and, fu and functionally sound, nobody wants to read. Now, writing journal is like storytelling. You need to create your own concepts, starting from primary school English, basic English, but very, very nice. You have a subject before and the object. You need to know how to connect lines and dots together. So when you increase your writing skill, your speaking skill, we also improved. So we need to base uh, and concentrate on all this and take confident notes of all these particular points. Another thing that we need to know is that we need to attend seminar regularly. Now, a seminar should not be until maybe once in annual. There are a lot of platform, thank God, webinars, a lot of webinars. We need to identify a lot of writing skills webinar that was gonna help us for us to become uh, very, very better. Also, when we now develop this, there are so many platforms that many of us as a young scientist have not joined. May I ask you this question? How many of you are on research yet? How many of you are on Google Scholar? How many of you are on LinkedIn? These are great network that could link you with top scholars in your field. I was surprised, uh, a couple of some months ago, I've been re receiving in, uh, invitation to come and serve as a keynote speaker from different universities around the globe. And they got even the African Union people I'm talking about got to know about me from my research gates. So that means we need to create a profile today after this lecture. So I want to sincerely appreciate Professor Ijabari for creating this platform because there are so many things around us that we don't know. The whole world is already around us, but we just need to get link as a scientist. So you need to register for research gates, Google Scholar, and uh, LinkedIn, and so many other ones. Now, another one, one of the major talents that many scientists have is plagiarism. Many people copy and paste. If you want to be distinguished in your field, you must first of all work on the issue of plagiarism. It's not good to copy and paste. You need to write in your own work. That's why I said you have to start to develop your writing skill, then uh, you improve your product. Because most of these publisher adopt below just anything, they accept anything below 7% to 10%. Most journal, but it depends actually. So you need to understand all these things that you need to improve and do a lot of things. So maybe because of my time, I might not be able to explain uh, beyond this, but I believe Professor Ijebari will help us to create another time and platform where I will be talking or how you be, could be noticed around the globe. Now, if you want to be noticed around the globe, you must make sure you publish your paper in a kind of peer-reviewed uh, journal or article that is indexed in Scopus or Thompson Reuters. These are what is going to leverage you and present you for automatically grant an award winner. So if you don't develop your journal, you cannot talk about patents, you cannot talk about innovation, you cannot talk about grants. So writing skill needs to be improved and a lot of other things before so many other things will not come in place. So uh, on this note, uh, let me say thank you very much. Uh, if I've not covered uh, many points, uh, I believe in some other seminars or conference or other uh, time, I'll be able to expand and elaborate more. Uh, Prof, I don't know, maybe I've done justice to- You have, you have really, you really done justice to the question. You know, you've answered it all. You know, if you are starting your career, uh, early career researcher, you know, you've had it from professor's mouth, you know, what you need to do. And uh, what you also said there about plagiarism is very, very important. So you must learn to, you know, to write, uh, using your own language, and if you using another person's and uh, maybe sentence, uh, try as much as possible to reference. You know, uh, when I was doing my PhD, my supervisor would always tell me about referencing a law. You know, it can't be too much. I mean, you need to reference uh, other people, others' work. You know, if you if you're not referencing, if you're using other people's um, you know, uh, concepts, what they conceptualize, that's like stealing. So you must come to a level where you are able to conceptualize 
you know, your own uh, statement that you are writing. And then um, he has said all, many other things like uh, attending conferences, having a mentor, all those things are very, very, very important. And, and sometimes you might need to use your money. You know, I remember one, I, I traveled to one conference, I know a workshop in Italy, I, 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 used, my, I used my money, although uh, accommodation was free, uh, they came to, to, to take us from the airport, but, but it's good. To, to use your money. Somebody said, Jim Roy, never, never begrudge the money you spend on your own education. You know, you must keep, keep developing yourself. And um, when you have the opportunity to write, somebody invites you to write maybe a book chapter, you know, take up the challenge and write. And let me also say this, when you start writing, especially you're writing articles, you're gonna get a lot of rejections, but, know that you are not being rejected. They are rejecting that paper. It's not you that you are being rejected. And, but try and look at the paper, try and correct, correct it. Uh, if they want, if it's a minor re, uh, revision or major revision and they, they still want to collect it from you, send it back to them after you make all those corrections. But if they don't want it to be corrected or if they don't want to collect it from you, send it to another journal. So never, never, never give up. Also learn to write, um, uh, grants, grants application. But like he also said the other time, his collaboration is very, very important. You discover some of those grants, especially uh, international grants, you need to get partners from all the places. And you meet some of these people when you go for conferences. So all those things are very, 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 very important. And Prof, you've really covered everything. But is there any closer remark that you want to tell our viewers? Yeah. I have uh, so many things, but first of all, let me say that uh, believe in yourself, believe you can get there, believe you are the kind of generation that's going to generate this generation in this generating period of generating generous. Believe nothing is impossible. What God cannot do does not exist. But yeah. uh, you need to identify what you really, really want. Many people are always confused oftentimes. You need to get your mind ready, get prepared. And don't forget issue of mentor mentee relationship. It's very, very important. If you can key into that and develop a robust network, the sky is not your limit. I'm sure among many of us uh, interacting today in this platform, in this network, uh, there's going to be presidents, Nobel laureates, uh, governor, distinguished scientists that's going to solve a uh, global problem. So on the issue of uh, bioeconomy related activity that we have talked about in some African continent, it is significant to know that uh, there are many countries uh, that needs to really redefine their bioeconomy strategy in Africa, uh, that is, how they could best adopt uh, by economy readiness in the, in the continent. Uh, the issue of policy implication in formulation of a dedicated national by economy strategy as an integral part of national uh, development agenda is also applicable in many countries. It will help us to improve uh, the state of by economy production determinant in Africa, also thereby increasing the continent uh, potential to employ back economy in resolving several challenges. So many strategies that we have uh, highlighted during the course of discussion need to be looked into by policymaker and government, and a lot of private partner uh, inter uh, interaction needs to be uh, adopted. Strategy to promote by economic economy must be a focus to targeted investment to support research and development, building efficient innovation system, improving the level of education, training, and skill of populations need to be developed. Now, supporting marketing development to enhance competitiveness needs to come in place. Furthermore, we need an uh, African country must improve their general governance because governance uh, is, is, is a key, has a lot of key role to play 
before we could talk about a good education and buy economy. So the quality of the infrastructure and the rule of law to attract foreign investment in terms of by economy uh, sector. Now, we, uh, during this talk, we have highlighted several important findings on the state of uh, by economy in Africa and readiness of African countries to adopt by economy as a kind of biotechnological tool that could help them to further uh, solve their various problems. And uh, we need to uh, enhance and put, uh, provide a kind of platform that could shape and enhance a robust public policy decision towards development of sustainable by economy on the continent. With this, we'll be answering so many sustainable development goals, which is a better advantage and impetus over millennium development goal. On this note, I want to thank and appreciate our distinguished professor and erudite professor of eminence for giving me this uh, opportunity. And I want to appreciate God for your life. You are a blessing to uh, this generation. I believe uh, some other time uh, I'll be coming on board to also talk about some good things that will help uh, development of mankind. Thank you very much, Prof. I'm very grateful. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, uh, oh, absolutely. I'm going to be inviting you at other times to come and uh, share your knowledge. You are, you are really a knowledgeable person. We need to keep hearing from you. You know, I, I've, I've been blessed. I've, been, I've learned a lot uh, from our discussion, from our conversation this afternoon. I also know that our viewers have also learned a lot. I would like to hear from you. And until then, see you next time. Bye. God bless you. Thank you, Bye. Prof. Sir.